If you've been wondering how to hit your one hand and backhand better, if you've been struggling with it for any reason, today we're gonna help you with your backhand technique, specifically the contact point. We're gonna really dig into what it takes to help you hit that world-class one-handed backhand. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution. I'm super excited to deliver this one-handed backhand lesson to you today. We're gonna help you with your technique and give you the instruction that you need. And what we want to focus on here is we want to make sure that contact point feels beautiful to you. Now, if you enjoy this lesson, make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Smash that like button because it helps the channel. And subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And turn on your notifications. Now, we can get started with today's lesson. So I get a lot of questions about the contact point on all the ground strokes, even the one-handed backhand. And there is some confusion about where the contact point should be on the one-hander. And typically, you want that contact point to be way out in front, a lot more in front than your two-handed backhand. Why? Because the two-handed backhand, you're using this back arm, and so the contact point is going to be right over your front knee or just in front of your front knee. But with the one-handed backhand, it's going to be further in front. Guess what? This is also impacted by the grip. That's right, the grip, because it depends on your grip. If you have a continental grip like this, the contact point's gonna be further back. But the more you move the grip so that it is behind the grip, behind the uh, grip like this, before you move the, the more you move the hand, I should say, so it's behind the grip, so it's more excessive, more towards that semi-Western backhand grip, more like the way the pros are hitting it, the more in front the contact point is going to be. So your grip will determine your contact point. Remember, continental grip, contact point's gonna be further back. Eastern grip, semi-western grip. So the more the hand goes behind the grip, the further out in front that you're going to make contact with the ball. Okay, we've talked about the grip. Now we have to focus on body alignment. So on the one-handed backhand, when you're hitting the one-handed backhand, you're obviously going to get a nice turn. And when you go to swing, you are going to stay turned more than any shot, really. More than the two-hander, more than the one-hander. You're going to keep that body turned and you're going to think of being sideways. Rarely do I see someone too sideways or too, too turned hitting a one-handed backhand. If anything, you're going to see a player that's going to open up too soon. So you want to focus on staying turned. When you hit the backhand, you want to hold your turn as long as you can. You're going to hold the turn as long as you can. Notice how my body is staying very still at the end. Okay? Watch my chest at the end. So my chest is what? About 45 degree angle towards the net. I am not opening up too early. Okay? That's the focus. We're focusing on staying sideways. If I end up 45 degrees right here, my focus in my mind is staying sideways. Now, when would you square up on the backhand? Well, when you're moving further out wide. So if I'm running across the court to hit a backhand, I am going to be fully turned like this, but when I'm done with the swing, I might have to square up. So watch, I run across the court, I'm sideways, sideways, sideways at contact. Afterwards, I square up. Why? I want to be able to recover. So let me just show you that with a ball. So if I run across the court, I'm sideways, and then I square up. Or I can even jump around. I'm sideways, and I jump, and then I square up. So when, I, when I'm done with my swing, when the ball is long gone, I'm squaring up so that I can recover. But if I'm more in the middle of the court, that's where I'm really gonna work on my turn. And then the way I can recover is I can just step back with my back leg. You wanna avoid swinging and letting your leg come forward like this. Okay, you wanna really hold your back leg so that you stay more sideways. Now, what can help you do this? There's a couple of things. Number one, your head position. So I talk about this a lot, and it's typically easier on the one-handed backhand than the two-hander. On the one-handed backhand, when you swing, you wanna feel like you're keeping your chin over your back shoulder like this. 
the chin over your back shoulder. Some players are going to swing and they're going to lean in a little bit and their head's going to go forward and the chin is over the front shoulder. So you want the chin over the back shoulder and when you do this, it keeps your body more aligned. It keeps your upper body more aligned. So when you swing, your upper body is aligned like this. If anything, it's going to feel like you're leaning back or side bending a little bit. And this will allow you to get under the ball and hit massive topspin. If you step in and your head goes forward, there's going to be a tendency for the racket face to close, for, for the racket face to close and the ball will go into the net. So we need to focus on keeping the head back. The head weighs 8 to 12 pounds, depending on the size of your head. You also want to keep the head on this side of your body, okay? On the hitting side of the body, because as soon as the head goes here to the non-hitting side, you're going to pull off the ball. So we focus on our head position. That will improve contact point. And then finally, we focus on our finish. We work on swinging and holding our finish like this strong shoulder, straight arm. A lot of players, when they finish, they struggle with their contact point because they finish with a bent arm like this. You don't want to do that. You don't want to swing with a bent arm. This is what I see a lot of club players do. They finish with a bent arm. Or they kind of flip over like this. No. Have the strongest finish you possibly can have. I get a kick out of coaches and players saying the, con the finish doesn't matter that once the ball leaves the racket, what happens after, it doesn't matter. The ball's gone. I strongly disagree because if you have an amazing finish at the end, right here, if you have an amazing finish, there's a very good chance your contact point was amazing. I've had too much success with players helping them with their follow through, which in turn helps their contact point. All right, so let's summarize this lesson for you for the one-handed backhand as it relates to contact point and help you with your tennis technique here. First off, you want to make sure you're aware of your grip. How far over is your grip? Because your grip will determine your contact point. All right, the next thing you want to focus on is your body alignment. So you want to stay sideways at contact or feel like you're sideways. And then when you finish, you might feel like your chest is 45 degrees towards the net post. Sometimes you'll finish and you'll open up a little bit, but most of the time you want to feel like you're holding your body sideways and not over rotating. If you're moving wide, you'll square up more afterwards. The next is the head position. You're going to make sure that the head stays back and stays on the hitting side of the body. And the last thing we discussed today was the follow through, making sure your follow through is beautiful. Straight arm, strong shoulder, racket high, not to the side, not vent. Put all of these pieces together and you can start hitting world-class backhands. I hope you got a lot of value out of this lesson today. Go ahead and click the, the link in the description below or somewhere in this video if you want to go deeper with me. If you want to improve your game, take your game to the next level, go ahead and click that button because I want to help you jump to the next level, transform your game. That's what I'm committed to doing. So go ahead and do that right now and we will see you at the next lesson.